Welcome to the final part of this program series. The video after this one will be my conclusions and opinions about all we've discussed. Hi, I'm Alexandra. Thank you for watching this. In the trailer for the series, I asked, if you were living in a cult, would you know it? As we've explored, there's no aspect of our lives free from psychological manipulation. Today, we're going to take a simplified look at the hierarchical structure of this cult, as well as look at some examples of their language of symbolism. Have you ever wondered why those people in your life you're trying to wake up refuse to hear you? Why don't they just leave, you ask? Because, as I postulated in the trailer, they're in a cult. The Reality Cult International, if you will. A cult based on mind control and psychological manipulation. This world is like being trapped in a cult. Let's define terms so that we're all on the same page. Mind control and brainwashing are interchangeable, while TBMC uses the methods of mind control to create DID and maintain control of the created system of alters or parts. TBMC can be defined as systematic and calculated torture that blocks the subject's capacity for conscious processing. Trauma programming employs suggestion, hypnosis, and or classical and operative conditioning to implant thoughts, directives, and perceptions in the unconscious mind. The behaviors are implanted in trauma-induced dissociated identities, also called parts or alters, that force the subject to do, feel, think, or perceive things for the purpose of the programmer. The objective is for the subject to follow directives with no conscious awareness, including execution of acts and clear violation of the subject's moral principles, spiritual convictions, and volition. Brainwashing, on the other hand, is a method for systematically changing attitudes or altering beliefs, originating in totalitarian countries, especially through the sure. use of drugs or psychological stress techniques. It's any method of controlled systematic indoctrination, especially one based on repetition or confusion. Mind control is an extreme form of social influence used to indoctrinate an individual in the attitudes and beliefs of a group, usually one that is religious or political in nature. Mind control, also known as brainwashing, coercive persuasion, or thought control, refers to the way some people have tried to control the beliefs and behaviors of others. It is a process where a group or individual uses methods to persuade others to change their basic beliefs and values. A group or individual may use unethical methods to persuade others to believe and do what the manipulators want. It often harms the person being manipulated. Let's see how this applies to the cult of the world we live in. Everyone else around you reinforces the cult dynamic. Some never see it. Some do, but are either too afraid to leave, try to leave but return, try to leave but are ostracized and shamed, or do their best each day to live outside the confines of the mind control cult they were born into. The nature of cults is that you don't know how bad it is until you've left. That's why a growing number of people are trying to share this truth with those still in the cult. Or in other words, some people are trying to wake up those who are still sleeping even though it comes at a great personal cost. If you no longer belong to this cult, you're not breaking from reality. You are breaking from the shared reality, from the cult's version of reality that you've discovered is untrue. The same way you would help someone in a cult is the same thing that helps others who are still living their lives in this worldwide cult. Don't accuse them or tell them to wake up. That will just make them defensive and it's very rude. You want to create thought-provoking dialogue. Ask well-thought-out questions to stimulate critical thinking skills. The goal of cults, in general, is to produce people who will carry on the ideology or traditions generationally for various purposes. Their aim is to keep the idea alive. The people are just a means to do that. The way media, Hollywood, and brands have influenced generations and steered us with trends in what is and isn't socially acceptable. It's important to see how the establishment has been controlling humanity through various avenues and tactics. It's not your fault. Now that you know better, you can be on guard. They put so much time and money into making you obey, it's okay to not buy what you're sold. Cults pare down multi-determined reality into an oversimplified version of half-truths and cliches that attempt to explain everything. 
we see that in media talking points. Anything you would see on a bumper sticker, viral social media posts, or unnatural ideological movements. This offers black and white answers to people who are uninformed of the reality behind the motive. Black and white thinking and thought-stopping phrases are common cult tactics. No one alive today experienced what life was like not to be born into this world cult, and consequently, most of society's personality has been created by it. Which is what makes breaking free even more difficult. Here is an oversimplified pyramid of the Reality Cult International, or what I'll be calling the cult of the world we live in. My series touching on this topic from a very different angle was literally called Mind Game. I'll leave links to that series below if you're interested. As discussed in part 2, cults work in tiered or hierarchical structures, usually divided into three basic tiers, the enlightened top one, two, or three leaders, the elect, and then the general initiates. The higher someone goes up the hierarchy, the more hidden knowledge is revealed. The bottom, or the general population, are the general initiates. Above them are the elect, in ascending order, followed by the enlightened few. These tiers are the what. These are the how. And the top is the why. Like this old meme says, you're in this photo and most of you don't like it. We have all been born into this cult. The structure is set up in such a way that physically leaving it is virtually impossible. But when you realize they are controlling you, they lose their power over you. You can decide what you spend money on. You can decide what you and your children choose to consume and support. You can choose to lessen the longitudinal impact of this cult's ideology. You can choose to break free. So you are here. This is our world. Mind control and its various forms is what makes someone act in the best interest of the tiers above, even when it conflicts with their own well-being or beliefs. Tier of influence. Social media, the media, radio, sports, TV, are all trying to manipulate, control, or change your opinion to meet an agenda at any cost. This includes the many types of disinformation agents such as journalists, academia, media, celebrities, and politicians. There are many types of change agents. The two most common are listed here. A spoon feeder agent is someone who dribbles out legitimate information. This is often done to build up a person's credentials. Lots of the people who are pretending to expose corruption are spoon feeder agents who provide a little new information, tons of already known secrets, and sprinkle in a measure of disinformation for added fun. Generally, spoon feeders increase their percentage of disinformation once they gain respectability. The spoon feeder agent's entire job or existence is to control the narrative and shape the public's mind on various topics. Agent of Influence these agents can be unwitting, under mind control, or ideologically motivated to use their positions of influence to sway the minds of others. Examples of agents of influence are anchormen on TV, journalists, TV commentators, academics quoted by the media, and some politicians. The Rhodes Scholarship is a front for a secret society in which powerful, intelligent, so-called geniuses are supported just so they can be used. Here are some other types of disinfo agents.
This tier influences people's thoughts and behaviors regarding what is and isn't popular and decides what's right or wrong, true or not. It doesn't matter what the truth is. It matters what they want you to believe the truth is. Universities fit into this category because there is very little in the way of trade being learned, but more so the ability to shape young people into the same cookie-cutter mold desired for society. A lot of this is accomplished by using the logical fallacy of argumentum ad populum, Latin for appeal to the people, which is a fallacious argument that concludes a proposition must be true because many or most people believe it often concisely encapsulated as, if many believe so, it is so. This tier shapes people's worldviews, which in turn shapes society. Next are mega corporations, or the tier of possessions. These are monopolies set up to give the illusion of choice. Brands splinter themselves so they seem to be from different companies, when in reality the money goes back to the same few places. Also, this tier monopolizes necessities. No matter what you do without these monopolies, you cannot get it done. Shipping cargo, railroads, building materials, paper products, water, etc. When monetary levels reach a certain height, individuals must be programmed. This is the tier of redistribution of wealth to themselves, or money laundering. These are philanthropists who give donations for a tax break but the organizations only benefit themselves. This is also the tier where innovations are throttled. For example, medical technology, agricultural advancements, safer and faster transportation, energy grids that are not archaic. Anything that would make life better for us is stopped here. The tier of greed. The next tier up is essentially the engine behind the previous tier. Where does the money come from? Who okays what gets done financially? The world banks. Money makes the world move, and this tier is in control of those movements. The tier of chaos. Above this are governments, all the way from small local governments to large ones of countries, including the UN and other organizations. The trickle-down effect of this tier displays the power of this cult to control the ingredients we listed of a cult and mind control, behavior, information, emotion, and thought control. Give a man a gun and he can rob a bank. Give a man a bank and he can rob the world. If you can control society, you can control these aspects of society. The programming essentially perpetuates itself. Everyone living in this cult reinforces its beliefs the same way cult members are zealots for the cause creating a new normal or reality for the newer converts. This includes things like financial exploitation, manipulation, or dependence, restrict leisure, entertainment, vacation time, distort information to make it more acceptable, keep members busy so they don't have time to think and investigate, manipulation of memory, possible false memories, make the person feel that problems are always their own fault, never the leader's or the group's fault. Your thoughts, feelings, actions are irrelevant or selfish. Instill black and white thinking. Forbid critical questions about leader, doctrine, or policy allowed. Organize people into us versus them. A lot of abuse tactics are the same as cult tactics which are the same as the overall reality most of us face. Isolation, love bombing, trauma bonding, and financial abuse. As well as the blame, name calling, shame, etc. If you really think about it, I'm sure you can find multiple examples for each of these by means of society at large and the media. The survivor's or victim's brain can actually become addicted to the abuser, and this is the reason it is difficult to leave, or why people return. On a small scale, local governments pad the pockets of the leaders without the taxpayers' money going back into the city. People are seen as property. Your usefulness is determined by your ability to create more wealth for them. Your health, mental or physical, is not a priority. Your life is spent working for very little gain. On a larger scale, national governments do the same things. 
They decide how long you work and what you get paid, like minimum wage. They take from the people and give very little in return. They implement worldwide policies that you and I never vote for. The outcome is determined for you based on their end game. Institutions like intelligence agencies fall into this category too. The organizations that carry out programming are in this tier. They're essentially the mob of the world. This tier takes an idea and implements it. The reality is that all governments work together. There are no rogue countries. They are all working towards common goals. Wars are not organic, but planned for specific purposes. The masses think this is the top of the power structure, when it's only the end of the visible or exoteric power structure. It is from the next esoteric or hidden tier that the feigned conflicts between countries are planned for strategic purposes. This tier, the tier of order, consists of the orders who create death, panic, and chaos in systematic and controlled ways to be executed by the lower tiers. These puppet masters who run our world seek to keep society in a state of constant fear. They generate Hegelian dialectics, problem, reaction, solution, accomplished over many generations. They control every detail of every tier beneath them. They are the, quote, hidden hand that steers humanity. Everything that happens to influence society is proof of their power. They are the gears inside the machine. But they are still not at the top. The highest tier is comprised of transgenerational occult royal bloodlines who believe in the power of generational memory. They have passed on their esoteric or occult teachings in an unbroken chain of secession. This tier holds their, quote, true knowledge. The number of generations a family has been in the occult affects the rank of importance. The orders beneath them get various versions of their mystery religion. So that no piece beneath them has the entire whole. They are the only ones that retain the whole picture. Occultism, magic, Witchcraft, astrology, geomancy, theurgy, and numerology are the foundation of this tier. This governing body controls the world, not the orders, nor the various religious megacorporations that pretend to rule. The most ancient mystery traditions are kept within the 13 Illuminati bloodlines, and they would not be shared with ones not on their level. The orders have some of this secret knowledge and act as esoteric schools of the mysteries. The entry point for the so-called schools are the various religious fronts created by them, hence why atheists are not allowed in various fraternal orders. The Illuminati gain instant power bases by setting up Gnostic religions as fronts. These smokescreens are used like brands. They gain people's trust, then they become loyal, generally unaware of who makes the product. This strategy is not relegated to just religions. This is their modus operandi. Everything they do is hidden behind some sort of front. They are illuminati because they see themselves as the enlightened ones, the ones who hold the flame of knowledge and keep it burning like an Olympic torch. They believe Lucifer to be the figure that embodies this secret knowledge, and Illuminism can also be called Luciferianism. Various sects believe Lucifer to be different things, but they all see him as the pinnacle of wisdom. They believe in God as well, but they do not fear or have any reverence for God. As far as they're concerned, they're above and more powerful than God. They also do not worship Lucifer as a superior deity. They simply see him as a god, not unlike themselves. They believe they work with entities, not for them. The Lucifer Arian occultists believe with every fiber of their being that they are demigods who have the right to break any law and commit any crime and do anything that they want to affect the world you live in whether you like it or not. They want to have statue victories or things to be remembered or immortalized in the minds of men, be they good or bad. There are Illuminati, a plural word for people who share this belief, but there is also Illuminati programming, which is a form of TBMC that instills this belief system. It doesn't matter what you think is real or not, the people involved in these cults have complete faith in their ideologies. Just because some people don't believe in demons, Lucifer, or sacrifices for bonds or power, doesn't mean these perpetrators don't. Just because somebody doesn't believe in magical systems, 
doesn't mean that others don't. They don't care if you're Christian, Muslim, Catholic, Hindu, or what faith you adhere to. They don't want you individually. They only care about you collectively. One of the best ways to collectively control people is with religious dogma. Their goal is to rule the world. Thirteen bloodlines of various different nationalities have endured through the centuries. In that time, they have gained immense power, knowledge, and wealth. The language of Luciferianism, then, is symbols. They can take on many meanings, but the esoteric core of the symbol remains to all who view it. They share their symbols with the tears below them. Illuminati symbols are all over the world. The Illuminati are all over the world. They pass their, quote, secret knowledge of the workings of the mind down, and the result is things like the chainless slaves we discussed previously. No country is immune to the reach of the Illuminati, ritual, or military programming. They are not limited to the United States of America. There are MK Ultra programmed individuals worldwide. The programs go by other names, but they are there. They have their own chosen few over each one of the tiers below them. The tier of architects have a hierarchical structure all their own. Illuminati or illuminated people have enough knowledge to function at the level where they are most useful. There are many tiers to Illuminism. The various factions of Illuminati rule the world as the kingpins. The Illuminati is the overarching conglomeration of the top tier and countless organizations encompassing all world religions and groups. Think politics, finance, porn, drugs, communication, and religion. They are the cherry on top of every Sunday. The perceived perfidious nature of some of the countries or organizations is nothing more than them following the commanded direction of this tier and progressing onto the decided paths of the Hegelian dialectic. Someone plays the problem side, another the reaction side to blend once again in the solution, the same way as the hermetic principles of poles differing only in variation of degrees, or in the magical systems of left and right-hand paths, all merging and intertwining eventually. The goal is not to divide and fight amongst themselves. The goal is to divide and conquer. Divide and conquer is one strategy used to accomplish their goals in the style of Hegelian dialectics. Problem, Reaction, solution. At the highest levels of this tier, there is no disagreement, no differing ideology. There is the plan and the instructed way of implementing it, through the use of false conflict via both sides under their complete control. I have discussed this in depth in my previous videos, especially in the mind game series. Moving on to the world stage. The question of everyone would have to be in on it is oversimplified as well, but with just a little bit of thought can be seen to be quite accurate. The occult tale of Macbeth says, Life is but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Likewise, much of reality is a stage, a film. In a film, nothing is organic. A set doesn't just appear. Everything you see has been placed there by someone for a reason, usually to create a certain feeling, atmosphere, or symbolism. Who then is responsible for the strategic placement of certain elements in the movie? Is it the producer? The director? The director of photography? The answer is yes. It's various people, depending on the project and depending on who is the one in the know. But it takes an entire crew to create a production. Is everyone in on it? Yes. But is everyone in on the bigger occult picture? Absolutely not. The cashier at the fast food chain has no idea what corporate and hire is involved in. The same way H.H. H. Holmes built his infamous hotel, compartmentalized so no one knew the final floor plan. The various tiers that make up this cult of reality have a piece of the picture. Very, very few know the whole play. Only the tier of architects. The entire system is set up to be so well hidden that they're never exposed. But in a play or a film, it's a story and there are actors playing their prescribed roles. Those who are aware of this fact are not actors. We're awake and in control of our minds. We will be on guard against the attacks thrown at us every day. 
I hope you've been able to see that very little in the way of transformational movements is organic. It's a very small group who has shaped and molded society to the way that it is. Technology has expedited this process. Now that we've explored each tier, let's look at how the highest tier symbolism bleeds into each and every tier below it. Our culture is made up of programming and programming byproducts. Society is influenced from the top down of this structure, trickling down into the tiers beneath, raining down on you and I, the unwilling victims of this cult. This series began with a look at media and entertainment, so let's end it the same way. But this time, let's look at what has been in front of us all along with a new lens. Hopefully now you have the roadmap to decode some of the symbolism to see their signature on all that makes up this world. Remember that symbolism and the occult is the rule, not the exception. You'll find it literally everywhere. This section is a minuscule handful of a multitude of examples. Do you think that devil worship is real in Hollywood, like the whole black magic and all that stuff? Symbolism is a language. Entertainment is fluent in it. Byproducts of the programming process are what make up the world of mass media most of us are steeped in. Architecture is also instrumental in symbology, not only in the physical structure, but also the locations chosen to build them. Nothing in architecture or media is superfluous. All of it is deliberately included for a reason. As we discussed, these symbols reinforce the programming undergone by the countless survivors of mind control. The public is mind controlled by these systems as well, in the form of adoration, worship, incorporation of propaganda, and the willingness to spend money to support these villainous institutions. All of which is hidden to be undetectable to those who don't speak the language. Please keep in mind, this is much bigger than just the entertainment industry. This is a worldwide enterprise. The overt symbolism and imagery of Hollywood makes it easy to forget the other real victims are living in the shadows. People are too focused on Hollywood as having the monopoly on chainless slaves. But as this series has shown, these victims can be anyone. Your next door neighbor, classmate, or child from the seemingly perfect family. They are all around us and we as a society need to do a better job of believing them and learning to identify the warning signs. This symbolic language is not always in your face like the case with horror movies like Mother or Suspiria or music videos, but rather very subtle. The covert, occult, or malevolent style throws people off by thinking that only very dark-themed things are part of this language when it is literally everywhere. Many aspects of designer programming can be seen in television and movies ranging from all genres and ages. Miraculous, the tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir depicts dual personalities the same way Hannah Montana does. One side the family and friends know about, but the superhero or superstar side has to remain secret, causing stress and conflict for the character. Butterflies are a popular symbol. But it all makes sense. Gabriel Agreste is a secretive man, and he never leaves his house. And get this, check out his brand's logo. A butterfly? Love is like a butterfly is one of the more delicately beautiful entries in the Dolly Parton songbook. After leaving the Porter Wagner show, she used it as the opening for her own variety show, and the symbol of a butterfly has been a presence in her life ever since, including the logo of her Dollywood theme park. Blue butterflies are particularly popular.
Cats are another concept used, usually in the form of a, quote, spirit, guide, or familiar, unquote, like the one in Coraline. This entire film is so full of symbolism that I'm actually not sure what someone who doesn't understand Monarch and the Occult sees. It includes the commonly depicted Malocchio gesture or the symbol of the Hand of Glory, as does an anime called Fire Force. Different people have called it different things. The Maloic sign, the Devil sign, or the Corna. But the two fingers sticking up look like the horns of a devil. So when you feel things slipping, flash this sign and let it fill you up with the fighting spirit. Disney is notorious for drawing characters with this gesture as well. It is also CGI'd into the animation of the Cats musical. Pay attention and you'll start to see this more often than not. There's Clark Kent, or Superman, a double identity, like most superheroes. A character undergoing a trauma and coming out with a different personality can be seen in Harley Quinn. Other media about programming is the Manchurian Candidate, The Born Identity, The Killing Room, American Ultra, and countless others. And sometimes the CIA even has a hand in making the films, which falls into the category of information control. According to the 1991 Task Force Report on Greater CIA Openness, the CIA now has relationships with reporters from every major wire service, newspaper, newsweekly, and television network in the nation. It also states the CIA persuaded reporters to postpone, change, hold, or even scrap stories that could have adversely affected national security interests. A variety of state agencies have liaison offices in Hollywood today, FBI, NASA, Secret Service, and the Department of Defense. The Pentagon allegedly rewrites scripts to reflect the government in a positive manner in exchange for using their equipment like aircraft carriers and helicopters. Learning to decode or expose the language of the occult means we now notice what we have never noticed before. This same symbol is above an elevator in the Washington Monument. It represents a supposed elevation of consciousness in Egyptian mythologies. Above one of the elevator doors is a winged disc with a six-pointed star in that disc. That winged disc goes back to Egyptian mythologies and indicated elevation of consciousness. Subliminals are no longer hidden. Instead, you can immediately spot them once you've learned this language. The series, called The Promised Neverland, is just one example of a story based on government programming. The entire premise of this show is about children in an orphanage who discover they're actually in a human farm, and instead of being adopted, they're sold as meat. To demons. The higher IQ children get to live longer than others. The show is very heavy on symbolism, like the experimentation rooms, a character called Minerva, and a laboratory called Lambda 7214. Horror films are the most notorious for incorporating themes of programming, whether it be because the subject matter is inherently disturbing or to discredit anyone who talks about these topics. People automatically dismiss them because that's just from a movie or something. 
Think about how much easier it would be for victims to speak up without this entertainment culture. Saturday Night Live recently had a sketch about how popular murder shows have become. Not only do these kind of crime shows and podcasts desensitize people to the crimes, this sketch is literally making fun of this fact. But like a drug, once you adjust to a dosage, you need more. The same is true for violence. Once you're accustomed to some form of horror, you seek out more extreme methods to get the same high you once got. The sketch actually mocks this fact. Recently, there was a video made, promoted on YouTube, about a meme that became viral on TikTok and Reddit regarding disturbing films. The video caused people to seek out this material. Google Trends seemed to agree. There was a spike in searching and interest generated after the meme and video were promoted. I want to make this clear. People's death and suffering is not your entertainment. The Saturday Night Live sketch then goes on to do the same with cult shows. Have you heard about cult shows? Cult shows about cults are produced by the same mass media responsible for so many of the problems we're talking about. They are literally in the business of information control and propaganda. You will never be told the truth. I have seen some of these types of shows, and they tell you nothing of significance. If anything, these shows are used to gatekeep information to make the viewer feel like they know about a topic, but are actually more misinformed than before they watched it. These tales of serial killers and cults do nothing but pacify the public. It creates this ceiling of depravity. Wow, this is as bad as it gets, because there's a docu-series on it. This is as horrible as a criminal can be, when in reality, the most depraved criminals are faces the public is generally unaware of. Back to programming imagery. The editing in Carrie is symbolic at the climax of the film when she is completely overwhelmed and at a breaking point. The screen literally splits, depicting, well, a split in personality. She splits, and De Palma splits the screen. And when Carrie's personality splits, and she just looks, it's like the other side takes over. I'm a split personality. Ozzy Osbourne and John Osbourne is, is two different people. John Osbourne is talking to you now. But if you want to be Ozzy Osbourne, you know, it, it, it's like, takes over. Joaquin Phoenix once said, quote, My significant other is myself right now, which is what happens when you suffer from multiple personality disorder and self-obsession. Phoenix also created a documentary in 2005 called Earthlings about humankind's dependence on animals for economic purposes. According to Live Kindly, quote, Earthlings is packed with graphic footage of violence against animals, so it can be difficult to watch. At the same time, most will still consider it to be essential viewing for anyone who might use or consume animal products, end quote. Now, I find this logic interesting. Exposure to graphic violence against animals is meant to propel people to stop supporting harmful industries. So why do people with this amount of power and influence never focus on the graphic violence against humankind that's perpetuated by the industries fed by unaware masses? Why is YouTube's algorithm actually promoting violence towards humans? The same with mass media. The real answer is because anyone at Phoenix's level speaking out against the superiors would be an immense danger. And the higher tiers on the chart are in the business of keeping humanity in a constant state of fear, which leads to apathy. Why are these type of graphic videos used to stop violence against animals, but when humans are involved, people watch them as some form of entertainment? Horror movies are to the film industry what heavy metal music is to music. Many people make the mistake of believing that by avoiding these genres, they're safer or their children are safer. This is not true. Occult imagery is ingrained in programming and in most media. It is the backbone for a lot of stories being told in genres you would never expect. Here are two examples. Pee-wee's Big Adventure Everyone knows Pee-wee's Playhouse was a little out there, but the movie was not based on some wacky characters or odd humor. The movie actually draws directly from the tarot. The 1985 movie, directed by Tim Burton, is an occult ritual that follows the major arcana of the tarot card for card. Simply put, the tarot is a sequence of cards that use archetypes to map the major plot points of a life story. Actually, this concept is not new in storytelling. 
The hero's journey, or going from ignorance to enlightenment, is often used to structure stories in film and novels. Joseph Campbell outlines this in his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Thor and Jane Eyre are two such examples. The other example is that Scooby-Doo is based on Kabbalistic pathworking. The characters represent a group of symbolic seekers on a Kabbalistic path. Their names and colors correspond to archetypal symbols and specific sephirot. Fred corresponds to fire, Daphne water, Velma air, and shaggy earth. Each episode is based on the symbol-heavy gang being diverted from their path by some evildoer where they are split up, then use their prescribed powers, such as a flashlight or glasses, to piece together the greater reality and then reunite. Christian music is another example of a money-making industry that uses occult and programming symbolism in its lyrics and videos. Do not make the mistake of assuming this industry is not very much a part of the world. Just because you may not recognize something as being a cult doesn't mean their words and symbolism is not intentional. After all, the best place to hide is in plain sight. Ask yourself why the Grammys has a category for best contemporary Christian music. And the Grammy goes to Kanye West. Why do the popular Christian bands collaborate with such worldly occultists? One example is the song Amen by King and Country. It was written by all of these people. However, Ryan Busby is listed as a writer. Busby was a prolific songwriter for pop and country superstars such as Keith Urban, Katy Perry, Shakira, and the Backstreet Boys. Here are some of the lyrics to Amen with two symbolic occult phrases. Caterpillar to a butterfly. And then from dark to light. The first being a programming phrase and the second being a very popular phrase in Freemasonry. Just because a song is considered to be in the Christian music genre does not mean it honors God. 9 out of 10 times it's all about the money. Or the reinforcement of programming. My point is not to take in any media passively. Another example is the network TLC, which is generally thought to promote shows that appear to be family-friendly or more wholesome compared to other networks but some of their alumni have turned out to be very bad people indeed, who are part of cults, for lack of a better word. Their television programming tends to follow a pattern, whether it's in the title or not. One particular bit of information I found interesting was on the show The Blended Bunch that follows a blended family. The wife's first husband died of cancer. His obituary shows he pursued a career teaching seminary for the LDS church. And this is his gravestone. Back to my main point of being aware of what you're consuming or allowing your children to watch. I'm not saying that all of the artists or all of the people involved here are bad people, but when something is put in front of the public to be consumed by the masses over something else, there's usually a reason, an agenda or a connection. Be aware of what you hear and see. What do all Disney films have in common? If you answered magic, you're correct. Another example of something hiding in plain sight. Many people are against magic as soon as spell books or grimoires are involved, but they're perfectly fine with letting their children consume stories built upon magic. No one has sold the world magic better than Disney. There is a false assumption that anything magical must have overtly evil imagery. Satanic imagery is usually a red herring, what you've been conditioned to associate with magic or the occult. The occult Kool-Aid comes in many flavors. Dark Satanic is just one. This is using effective conditioning to associate magic to overtly satanic imagery. If it isn't overtly satanic, it must not be dangerous. This is an obvious fallacy because we've been conditioned with both sides of magic, also called the Force. I discussed this concept in my mind game series. In quotes, good magic. Always defeats the quote, bad magic in these stories. 
Kris Jenner endorsed ritual manifestation candles at one point in her career. Like a prescription for your soul. Right. Which brings me to my next question. Sure. Each person is different, right? Each wish is different, right? So how does Wicks of Wisdom work for everybody and all their different requests? And of course, Gwyneth Paltrow's lifestyle brand Goop, with its talk of things like shamanic energy medicine. Every indigenous culture has some form of witchcraft, its many forms pervade media, and if you only know to look for pentagrams, you'll miss the pentacles. I'm actually re-recording all of my old music in the studio where, um, where we originally recorded it, so it's been amazing and I can't wait for you to hear it. Parents don't let their children listen to mayhem for obvious reasons, but in today's world, they have to be much more vigilant against what they consume because evil comes disguised. Many are still ignorant of the occult powerhouse that was the Beatles. This info might seem so foreign, so out of the ordinary, that you feel powerless against it. What can we do? Well, if we look at the previous example, animal cruelty, your money matters. After learning of the horrors of circuses and the fur industry, consumers withdrew their wallets and the industry suffered, or ceased altogether. Don't underestimate the power of one person. How do you change the world? by informing the people around you. Whenever anyone stands for justice, for the oppressed, and with the oppressed, there's hope. Not a whole lot in entertainment strays from its occult roots. The entertainment industry is used to reinforce mind control in people who have designer programming, as well as to expose the general population to the same symbolism, aware or not, in a way that will numb the masses and discredit any criticism of the elite who control the media and information released for the consumption of the public. Again, a similar scenario to the information control of a cult. There is a connection that runs through many secret societies. The connections are the symbols each society uses. Symbols are so powerful because they are not concrete, they represent entire ideas, secret knowledge, and countless other things in a way no other medium can. The same way, Media and imagery is so powerful because it's not about the literal what is happening, it's about the essence of what's happening. What lesson is being taught? What is the meaning behind the action? The Disney movie Zombies 2 has a song that has lyrics such as, Feeling lost on the inside, while the outside's cool and collected. Thought I knew me the whole time, but the truth is so unexpected. And, I know I got the best of me. But where's the rest of me? Been looking for the missing piece, cause I'm missing me. Notice the whole upside down world imagery, the doorways, hallways, spiral doorknob, the list goes on. 13, a highly symbolic film from 2003 is about troubled teens. It was Evan Rachel Wood's breakout role when she was just 14 years old. But the lyrics to a song called Lemon on the soundtrack have more symbolism of a monarch victim than I will share here, but you can listen to the song if you like. It's linked below. Then there's the entire K-pop industry, which reeks of monarch symbolism. Katy Perry's first album was a self-titled gospel album called Katie Hudson, her birth name. Notice the one-eye imagery. Most of these ultra-famous types have the telltale signs of monarch slaves. I'm sure everyone watching this can think of unique examples. One-eyed symbolism is abundant in the occult, but why? Well, one phrase from the 1500s goes, In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. However, a similar phrase originating much earlier in the 4th and 5th century AD appears in the Genesis Rabbah. In the street of the blind, the one-eyed man is called the guiding light. The land of the blind refers to people who walk around deaf and blind to the actions of the tier of architects. If you're sick of seeing their symbolism flaunted in your faces, congratulations, you're not one of the blind. Marilyn Manson, Jim Morrison, Mick Jagger, Courtney Love, and many others had fathers working in intelligence in various agencies like MI6 and the CIA. It 
it's almost as if they were deliberately made famous and given a platform on purpose to socially engineer specific generations of people. And this happens in every generation, mind you. On another note, Greg Dark, one of the Dark Brothers, who are notorious purveyors of dark-themed, occult-tinged porno films, Dark is infamous for peddling CP, since many of his films featured a 13-year-old Tracy Lords. He went on to work in the mainstream media creating music videos for Britney Spears and Mandy Moore. Hello Kitty is sometimes used as a beta programming symbol. Brush, brush, brush away candy. What is it that you search for? Oh dear. I've been brushing for hours just to make sure it's gone. <laughs> I guess we can honestly say that you've lost your mind. No. I know exactly where it is. Really? In his belly, of course. You left something behind. A machine. Mm. The hub of the city. I was scared at first, I thought. Hop ate my heart. And then he swallowed my brain. What's left for you to live for? This can be seen in a bizarre 2009 MAC Cosmetics and Hello Kitty collab ad depicting beta programming, incorporating elements of Alice in Wonderland, The Wizard of Oz, and BDSM. Controversy has recently surrounded Army Hammer, whose ex-girlfriend Paige Lawrence recently claimed he branded her and talked of cannibalism, as well as introducing her to what he called BDSM, which was used as a smokescreen to abuse her. As mentioned in part one, when something is destigmatized, it's harder for it to be seen as such again. The push to normalize alternative sexual lifestyles has been popularized in the last few years. The most obvious mainstream example would be Fifty Shades of Grey normalizing BDSM, but things like Game of Thrones and Bridgerton have also worked to push the envelope to normalize vaudeville-ish style cinema in the accepted mainstream. There's another darker side to all of this. Abuse is disguised as BDSM to victims. Remember that beta programming is sexual programming. The answer is yes to, is a specific genre of porn like BDSM a part of beta programming? Underground or extreme and Philia's is connected to programming and is an entire underworld none of us want to admit exists. The sad reality is, it does, and many victims are trapped in that life. Speaking of beta, let's look at entertainer Lady Gaga. Her body of work is just a lexicon of programming symbolism, such as the song called Red and Blue, which are symbolic colors and free scenery, off of her album when she still went by her real name, Stefani Germanata. <laughs> Choose any of her lyrics, but I'm just going to choose 911 from her latest album called Chromatica. Here is a sample. Keep repeating self-hating phrases. I have heard enough of these voices, almost like I have no choice. And keep my dolls inside diamond boxes, save them till I know I'm gonna drop this front I've built around my oasis. Doll programming and diamond programming are being referenced here. The whole verse is about this backup program kicking in when she drops the front. Jewel programming is ranked by the value of the jewel, with presidential models being the highest jewel, which is a white diamond. Consider Lady Gaga's childhood home. Lady Gaga, or Stefani Germanata, and her parents moved into the Pythian building in the 1980s. Lady Gaga had always given the impression that she grew up poor, but the Pythian building is in the exclusive and high-rent area of the Upper West Side of Manhattan. The family live there in a triplex with a terrace. The Pythian building is rather interesting due to its symbolism. It was built in 1926 and 27 by the Knights of Pythias for about three million. The architect, Thomas Lamb, was well known for designing movie theaters in Hollywood as well as Broadway theaters. 
Like other secret societies, the Knights of Pythias was organized around mystic rituals and included ceremonial props and costumes. Local units were called castles, a term later changed to subordinate lodges, and members, depending on rank, were pages, esquires, and knights. And, like the masons and shriners, by the early 20th century their elaborate lodges reflected exotic architectural styles, Moorish, Egyptian, and Byzantine, for example. The Pythian also became the home to a music recording studio. In the first years of the 1950s, the Knights of Pythias gave Decca Records the exclusive use of the main auditorium as a recording studio. Some of the best-known names in rock and roll would produce their hits here. Bill Haley and the Comets recorded the albums Rock Around the Clock and Shake, Rattle, and Roll here in 1955, and Johnny Burnett and the Rock and Roll Trio recorded its debut album here the following year. Buddy Holly's first recording session in the Pythian Temple studio was on June 19, 1958. The Knights of Pythias claim to be a simple fraternal organization that does charitable work, much of it for <clears throat> children. Quote, Nationally, the Pythian Lodge owns support and endorse a myriad of charitable endeavors, such as homes for the elderly, camps for handicapped children, little league teams, boy and girl scout troops, scholarship programs, rehabilitation wings at hospitals, Ronald McDonald homes, the Seeing Eye, Dog Programs, etc. Here are some famous Knights of Pythia. I'm not suggesting that everyone who lives in this building is aware of the symbolism, but it is highly likely that the symbolism was important to the Germanata family, especially to raise Stefani there. The rags to riches story Lady Gaga used to tell about her life was concocted during the time she was an adult and lived in this apartment building from ages 20 till 24. It does not mean that these artists don't work hard or are not talented. They are. It's just that the top tier, the household names, were carefully selected and crafted to be put there and worshipped by the public. When I was younger, I, was, I, I loved watching TV and I loved all those like Nickelodeon shows, like all of that, and Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and I'm like, I want to be on TV, and I was nine right. and my mom was like that is definitely not happening right and so she let me go on one audition to be like okay she'll get rejected and then you know she'll be over it and I ended up getting the part on that That's audition amazing. and so then I just kept doing it and doing it and my mom kind of was like and now you're 24 I don't know how that happened I, it's really funny when you oh there you are is that your first yeah, is look. that your first game yeah there uh, yeah at the movie blow with Johnny Depp that, oh was, my, that was oh my god yeah <laughs> You know, that was just on the other night. It was like really? on HBO or something like that. I know, I had no idea who he was. And then as I get older, I'm like, I worked with Johnny Depp and I didn't I know. know. Celebrity worship. We've been programmed for years to not think of it that way. But that's exactly what it is. The celebrities we see were not born this way, as in, born with immense talent that propelled them to stardom. Instead, most of them have connections or family ties to transgenerational powers that you and I do not. Elle is actually the direct descendant of King Edward III and maybe even a very distant cousin of Kate Middleton. Wow. The band Weezer put it best with their hit from 2005, Beverly Hills, about wanting to be a celebrity. The truth is, I don't stand a chance. It's something that you're born into, and I just don't belong. By now, you should realize how awful it is to be born into these occult circles, and how blessed you are not to have experienced what most of them have. All that glitters is not gold. So many take advantage of their power and use it for evil, or just unacceptable behavior, like Chrissy Teigen. The way that she has spoken about children and toddlers on Twitter should be illegal. I don't understand how she's gone under the radar for so long when it comes to this. I mean, people have brought up her tweets throughout the years, but she deleted like 60,000 tweets and then tried to erase everything she said. We're going through a bunch of tweets today, but I think this next one is probably the worst one in my opinion because she references this man named Anthony Weiner, who is pretty much a U.S. representative who got called out for doing horrendous things. Well, Chrissy Teigen thought it would be cute one day to tweet out on <laughs> June 12, 2011, 
I'm about to Anthony Weiner this kid. Like, I'm going to jail over pizza. Mm, why would you go to jail over pizza? Here are a few more pizza-related tweets. The singer Marina released a song called Purge the Poison with lyrics like, All my friends are witches and we live in Hollywood. But did you notice at the beginning of this music video? The red slipper trigger, indicative of Wizard of Oz programming. These change agents through personality and artistic ability begin to shape what the world looks like for other people. Ask yourself what the world would look like if we didn't have these influential characters. Let's see what ABC, who is owned by Disney, has been promoting lately. Michael B. Jordan's mustache. His name is Murphy. He got an OnlyFans coming is soon. Is that an OnlyFans account? Well, so why not? Bella Thorne is probably the most infamous celebrity to join OnlyFans. Bella, actually getting a little angry talking on about it. Big name stars changed it so dramatically. My income went like this, 2018, 19, 2020. <laughs> The site, which started in 2016, has seen a rapid rise, with 500,000 new users now joining daily. It has over 100 million users and over 1 million creators. OnlyFans has really boomed during the pandemic. I think people are uh, staying at home more and they're bored and they're needing more entertainment. People are also needing additional sources of income. And so both of those forces have converged kind of on OnlyFans. New York Times reporter Jillian Friedman recently chronicled the growing number of women joining OnlyFans during the COVID crisis. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have an announcement. Bella Thorne is now on OnlyFans and she's already crashed the site. The former Disney star has become the latest celebrity to join the racy subscription site OnlyFans. Bella Thorne was on the Disney Channel show Shake It Up, which aired from 2010 to 2013. Bella now has her own makeup line of astrological-themed eyeshadow and cheetah print lipstick. Bella's over-sexualized behavior is dismissed by saying, well, that's just her personality. And that may be true, but I believe Bella was a victim of programming, like so many others. Here is a clue. In 2006, at just nine years old, Bella was featured in a Target ad where she is seen releasing the symbolic monarch butterflies from a jar. Obviously, the transition, it's really, uh, it's definitely tough, you know, but it, it is what it is. Like, it's like anything in my life. I mean, if you read the book, you'll be like, Haha, transitioning from Disney to this was easy. I don't know. Getting molested for fucking from your six to your 14 seems like way harder circumstances or being physically abused all the time seems like a much more difficult situation than have paparazzi following you since you were 12. I don't know. I was still being molested when paparazzi were still following me. So it's pretty hard in my mind to think about these big flashlight photographs and everyone thinking they know me and talking about me, but having no idea the type of mistreatment that I was still dealing with at that time, that everyone around me saw and did nothing. Bella is still very much trapped in the industry just like Britney Spears. Paris Hilton spoke out against a girls' school she was forced to go to. But again, this is only half of the story. Indications suggest this is a cover for mind control. This table, and my parents were like smiling, like everything's fine, and we didn't ask any questions. And then I think they said she like went to boarding school. Paris Hilton was an heiress. Paris Hilton is the daughter of Rick and Kathy Hilton from the iconic Hilton family. Paris was nicknamed Star from birth. Paris Hilton had a strange upbringing and her family was complicit in her abuse. Hi, Stars. That is nicknamed Star. What are you excited about, Star? So I just remember always having a camera around. As a little girl. It was just this free spirit. <laughs> Drew Barrymore allegedly dealt with the same type of situation. I've, um, I've been where you've been. And watching your documentary, I mean, I don't know how many interviews and conversations I'm going to have on this show where I'm watching a mirror image of everything I've been through as well. And so I want to talk to you and have you know that 
I've had the people come and take me away. I've been locked up in solitary confinement. Uh, I've been in a place for lengthy periods of time. We're talking year, year and a half plus. I haven't seen a kind of story like this really reflected out there very often. Mariah Carey's sister has made these claims. Beyonce is 39 years old. Programming tends to break down around the age of 30, or 27 to 29. When Beyonce was 27 in 2008, Sasha Fierce was introduced to the world. Stage and performs is Sasha Fierce. When does she show up? Usually when I hear the crowd, when I yeah. put on my stilettos, um, when, like the, the moment right before when you're nervous and, and that other thing kind of takes over for you. Uh huh. Then Sasha Fierce appears in my posture. And the way I speak and everything is different. When Beyonce was 29 in 2010, she announced that she had killed Sasha, as she no longer needed her. Reprogramming was then completed at this time. Why have so many celebrities died at 27, or had major breakdowns around the same time? What is this occult 27 death club? It has to do with the Saturn return phenomenon in the belief system called horoscopic astrology, where Saturn allegedly returns to the exact same spot in the sky as the day someone is born, which takes allegedly 29 and a half years. According to this belief, a person enters the Saturn return phase at the age of 27. This time is the transition from youth to maturity, because Saturn, or Kronos, is believed to govern time. So according to this belief, everyone would have their own Saturn return at ages 27 to 29. Death programming in some subjects occurs at this orbit. It is literally genetically written into them by an occult programmer. The brain and body connection regarding what is done to the subject in trauma programming cannot be understated. Inspired by John Wayne Gacy, according to Stephen King's novel It, Pennywise the Clown wakes up every 27 years. This book was first adapted for the screen in 1990, and the new adaption was released 27 years later. Bill Skarsgård, who played Pennywise, was 27 years old during filming. What's passed off as passive entertainment is based on some real horrors occurring daily. All of this is done on purpose, of course. The best place to keep a secret is right in front of you, especially when they know you don't have the tools or the care to learn what they mean. Untangling valid information from what seems like so much disinformation is a task that they know most will never attempt. Magic and demonology also figure heavily into pop culture, as evidenced in the popular game called Genshin Impact. Fans have already noticed a lot of lore details in Genshin Impact that we're sure the developers and MiHoYo were trying to keep hidden, but a discovery that has gigantic lore implications is that all the Archons in the game discovered so far have ties to demonology. In particular, they're connected to the 72 demons named in the Ars Goetia, a mysterious grimoire on demonology found in the 17th century, also called the Lesser Key of Solomon. Now two is odd, but three makes a pattern, and there's only one other name in the game that relates back to this scripture, and it's Paimon. Of course, instead of being some sort of fearsome demon, they make it look like this cute little character. This is an example of when I said that not everything that is demonic in nature looks demonic in nature. Payman makes another appearance in the horror film Hereditary. We reject the Trinity and pray devoutly to you, great Payman. Give us your knowledge of all secret things. The entire movie depicts spiritual programming. The family involved is part of a generational cult called the Cult of Paimon, that the grandmother was a part of and promised her children and their children to this cult. The movie claims the mother had DID and was accused of placing people inside her children, as in altars. She depicts a Mother of Darkness character, or the person who oversees the ritual programming of the subject. The name itself is a red herring, hereditary. 
the movie follows how this demonic force impacts the lives of each generation involved, but without understanding this, most would assume it's referencing DID. However, DID is not hereditary. The ability to dissociate is, but remember only trauma causes DID. It is not automatically passed down. Spiritual programming is usually generational as well. This is due to the belief that spiritual bonds can be passed generationally. Does this idea sound familiar or apply to the tier of architects? In the film The Witch, this goat, Black Philip, embodies Satan. Now, Black Philip said fast sounds like Baphomet. In the film, the audience is trying to figure out who is a witch and who isn't, but with the exception of the father, Black Philip never kills anyone. Instead, letting the witches and their magic do his dirty work for him. By the end, all of the main character's family is dead, and she signs her name in some magical book and is led into the woods to join this coven. The transformation is complete, Black Philip's hunt is successful, and she is now one of them. The point here is the slow and subtle cunning and manipulation to get what Black Philip wanted all along. Black Philip can be a euphemism for cult recruiting, or for the literal devil himself, working on a victim until they ultimately fall into his hands. That's why in our real world, you must be aware of the goal, the bigger picture, the meaning behind the action. You cannot consume media passively, especially if you're not aware that it does affect you. Exchange the word entertainment for entrainment. Entrainment, that's outcome is programming. In our modern world, the programs you watch end up programming you. Grooming is the most overlooked tactic when it comes to cult recruiting. The media grooms the public into compliance. All of this begs the question, how do these filmmakers and media giants know the subtle imagery, hints, and clues of designer programming? The overwhelming lexicon of examples spanning the gamut of genres and mediums acts as incontestable proof of what survivors of designer programming have revealed. What we're discussing can be boiled down to one word, deception. Programming hinges on deception, subliminals, criminal activities, RA, everything hinges on the public being unaware of its existence. Concealment and deflection, sleight of hand tricks. A quote from Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass explains this concept. If I had a world of my own, everything would be nonsense. Nothing would be what it is because everything would be what it isn't. And contrarywise, what is, it wouldn't be. And what it wouldn't be, it would, you see? One complex example can be illustrated by a Wizard of Oz programmed system. Within this system are many parts, but one being positive light altars. These are called Christian altars. Glinda the Good Witch may be a Christian called a positive altar. So some individuals who profess one worldview may actually be fronts or altars. The same way there is malevolent-looking magic and benevolent-looking magic, there are benevolent-looking programs. There is always a light to the dark. Programming is not all Delta assassins. Remember Kai programming? The programming reassembles a packaged ideology or religious belief. How is this useful? It can easily snap a subject into being useful to an overall agenda. These can be people whose entire personality is their ideology or belief. You cannot have a Hegelian dialectic without both sides playing their role. For every action, there is an equal and opposite planned reaction in order to reach the prescribed synthesis. There are extreme dark agendas headed by programs. In response, there must be extreme light agendas headed by programs. Both of these slowly steer the public in the way the tier of architects planned it to go. Otherwise, there is no illusion of choice and the general public would not go along so easily with the agendas. This can look like politicians, influencers, religious leaders, etc. These programs say all the right things to attract people with the same ideology. But it doesn't mean it's organic or that that person necessarily even believes it deep down. Actions speak much louder than words. People can say anything, pay attention to what they do, and who speaks highly of them, what positions they hold. Very few things or people are as they seem. If the programmer desires, they can shatter a front Christian altar level and create a new level of New Age believing parts to replace the original front. The abuse can be done by the subject themselves to themselves because programming parts are given the ability 
to pull up horrific memories via codes. Those traumatic memories, which shattered the mind the first time, are still capable of doing it again when they are released. In other words, a subject can have profound worldview shifts at the mercy of their programming. That's why it's so important to not follow humans or put your faith in them. Most of them have strings attached, leading to the fingers of our enemy. The goal is always power. Financial power, political power, power over land, air, seas, the world. To retain this power, the government must be able to control people. To gain control over people, many methods are used. People are seeing, but not enough are realizing or understanding. They use fear, lust, greed, belief systems, poverty, and deception, which keep people divided. That allows government institutions to have the power and control. If we consider the Hegelian dialectics employed to steer and shape humanity, it would look like a herding dog steering a flock where the leader of each tier wants it to go. When the pack is moved, another will come to steer it again, and eventually end up where it was planned to be put all along. If you don't control the problem, you can't control the solution. Controlled and programmed individuals are necessary to continue this world cult running. Here are some examples of where programmed individuals can be found. Sports examples, pro football and basketball, college basketball, baseball, Olympians retired and active, soccer, golf, tennis, and other miscellaneous sports, announcers, analysts, studio hosts, and more. Other forms of fame include actors and actresses, directors, famous executives like Jeff Bezos, poor actors and actresses, reality show stars, newscasters, TV hosts, correspondents, politicians, political commentators, radio hosts, criminals, singers, guitarists, drummers, writers, models, relations of famous people, and astronauts, among many others. A rough estimate would be that 10% of the population is government or trauma-based mind-controlled. Now, an estimate of how much of the general population is mind-controlled by these programs is up to you. Who knew that something as simple as a girl holding a jar of butterflies could be a symbol of an insidious decades-old menticide operation? That's part of the illusion. What you don't know can't hurt them. It's the shiny veneer that hides the rotten core, the small lie that gets you to buy into the scheme, the simple promise that ensnares you into a cult, the packaged story that shapes your perception of reality, the lies that cover the dark truth. And that's the art of deception. Thank you all for watching the series. I'll see you next time.